Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of AirShaper. In this video, we'll dive into the aerodynamic details of what could possibly be the last great analog supercar ever made, the Gordon Murray T50. The T50 is Gordon Murray's gift to the supercar world after a career of over 50 years in motorsport and automotive design. Now, to better understand some of the most advanced aerodynamic features on this car, let's travel back into time to look at some of Gordon Murray's most famous creations. First, the Brabham BT46. Inspired by the ground effect Lotus Type 78 and the Chaparral 2J soccer car with two large fans at the rear, Gordon Murray and the team installed a large central fan at the rear of the Brabham Formula 1 car. But because movable aerodynamic devices were not allowed, its official purpose was actually to improve cooling, which it did. What it unofficially also did was to extract air from underneath the car. And with side skirts sealing the underfloor of the car from the outside air, the fan was able to maintain a low pressure underneath the car. This led to high amounts of downforce, enabling crazy cornering speeds. Secondly, let's look at what is probably the most iconic supercar ever made, the McLaren F1. It was famous for its central driving position, BMW V12, gold-plated engine bay and so on. What far fewer people know is that it featured a fan-assisted aerodynamics system, which behaved very differently compared to the Brabham BT46. Most sports cars feature a diffuser at the rear, which is the upward inclined part of the underfloor. Now this helps to accelerate the airflow underneath the car, which, through the Bernoulli effect, creates a suction effect generating downforce. But if the angle of the diffuser is too steep, the air will not be able to follow it and will continue on its own more horizontal track. This is what we call a stalled diffuser. Now, to prevent that, on the McLaren F1, the two fans, left and right, would take away air just behind the step of the diffuser, to remove the boundary layer, and this would help to make the air stick to the surface of the underfloor. This increased downforce by 5% and actually reduced the drag as well by 2%. Now let's see how Mr. Murray applied some of this aero magic to the T50. Just like the Brabham BT46, the T50 features a large central fan at the rear of the car. And even though it also helps to improve cooling, its functioning is actually more related to the fans on the McLaren F1. The fan is driven by an electric motor, which can make it spin up to 7000 rpm and has a power outage of 8.5 kW. It will eject air into the wake of the car, virtually creating a long tail car, reducing drag. And the 15 kg of thrust it creates is actually quite significant, because it's around 2.5% of the total drag on the car. Even more so, from what we understand from various interviews, it's actually more efficient to provide 8.5 kW to the fan and not to the dry shafts to increase top speed. Now let's see how the fan works together with different components of the car in the different aero modes. In downforce mode, the fan will source air from underneath the car, from right after the step of the diffuser. Now the T50 features two very distinct diffuser channels that fit between the engine bay and the rear wheels. They're so high that the exhaust system of the engine actually had to be moved upwards to make room for the diffuser channels. And another consequence is that the suspension arms and even the drive shafts need to cross the diffuser channels to get to the rear wheels. For that reason, the profile on the suspension arms has been made very aerodynamic, just like in Formula 1 and IndyCar, to limit the impact on the airflow. On these official CFD images, or computational fluid dynamics images, we can again see the aggressive step at the beginning of the diffuser. Without fan assistance, the air will not be able to follow this curvature and the diffuser will go into stall, creating just a mild amount of downforce. But with the fan activated and drawing air from underneath the diffuser, right at the steep part of the step, this will remove the boundary layer which will help make the airflow follow the curvature. This creates downforce locally under the diffuser, but it also helps to accelerate air underneath the entire car, so it helps to create downforce at the center and even at the front as well. And this eliminates the need for a large splitter at the front to correct the aero balance, which is the split between downforce at the front and the rear of the car. Also in downforce mode, the two flaps or aerofoils at the rear will rise up to create more downward force at the rear of the car. In total, in downforce mode you will have around 50% of extra downforce on your car. 
In streamline mode, which you can use on the straights to improve acceleration rates or to improve your efficiency, the flaps at the rear of the car will drop to minus 10 degrees to reduce the base suction, which is the pressure just behind the car holding the car back. And the fan will now source its air from the top air inlets, again removing the boundary layer which will help to reduce drag on the components downstream of the air inlets. Together with the virtual long tail effect, created by the fan injecting air into the wake behind the car, drag is reduced by an impressive 12.5% in streamline mode. There's one thing though that I don't understand. If we revisit the CFD images, there is one called fan off. However, if you look at the image, it actually looks like the boundary layer is being removed right at the top air inlets just like you would expect from the car in streamline mode with the fans on. In any case, let's move on to VMAX mode. This is basically the same as streamline mode, only the fan is now powered by the battery electricity and not by the engine directly, which frees up engine power. And then there's brake mode, in which the flaps rise to their maximum position of 45 degrees. You will have a 100% more downforce, improving the grip on the tires for braking. And because the flaps are positioned relatively high above the ground, the drag on them will create a backward tilting moment, counteracting the forward tilt caused by deceleration of the car. This greatly enhances the balance of the car under heavy braking. All this together reduces the stopping distance from 150 miles per hour to standstill by 10 meters. But why go through all this trouble of using a complex fan assisted system if you could simply smack on a huge wing at the rear of the car to have all the downforce that you need? Well for one, Gordon Murray wanted a clean and timeless design without all these add-ons. Another reason is that aerodynamic forces scale with the square of velocity. That means that if you design the car to have enough downforce for fast cornering at 150 km per hour, you will have 4 times as much downforce if you're doing 300 km per hour on a straight, where you don't need downforce and you just use up valuable suspension movement, compressing the car down towards the ground. One option to counter this is to design a stiffer suspension, but this compromises the ride quality and comfort. Another option is to implement active aerodynamics, like the T50, to dump downforce and drag when you don't need them, on the straights for example. And there's more to this car in terms of aerodynamics than just the fan. At the top of the car we see the ram air intake. Now ram air intake means that the air is literally rammed into a certain opening or channel in this case. This increases the pressure which in turn increases the engine power. And Gordon Murray positioned the inlet right above the head of the driver so that engine noises and inlet noises traveling back forward to the channel can be enjoyed to the max by the driver. And on the T50S, the more extreme track version of this car, the ram air intake is even more pronounced, where it further boosts engine power by another 30 horsepower. At the nose of the car, we can find air intakes left and right in the front bumper, which help feed air to the water cooler radiators for the engine. The hot air they produce exits behind the front wheels, together with the high pressure air generated by the wheels rotating in the front wheel arches. At the center of the nose, the air dives underneath the car via the curved ground effect inlet, which helps to accelerate the air underneath the car all the way to the back, helped by the diffusers. Just below the front headlamps, there are subtle inlets for the air conditioning and heating system. And then there's the large single windscreen wiper. Even that one seems to have received an aerodynamic treatment, with what seems to be a double wing profile. Now I don't know if it's there to improve downforce to push it against the windscreen, to reduce drag and turbulence, or to even interact with air coming out of the air vents in front of it, or something else. In any case, this was it for our short video on the aerodynamic features of the upcoming Gordon Murray T50 supercar. Just like the McLaren F1, it's about the experience and not about the numbers, according to Gordon Murray. Still, I'm pretty sure that this time again, it will be pretty good at the numbers too. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked it, please click the like button and drop an interesting comment. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.